Hi guys. Can you see everything okay? Can you hear me? <laughs> Is it bright enough in here? <laughs> I wanted to do dim lighting, but then I thought, you know what? I want, it, I want everyone to be able to see what we're doing, so I won't do the dim lighting. How are you guys doing? I'm excited. I told everyone 7.30, but I like to run a little bit early and I was already all set up and stuff and I was so excited. I wanted to just get on here. So um, I'm just gonna wait to see as people start coming in. But if you guys wanna prepare with me, um, what I wanna do is I wanna cleanse the space first when we open space up for spirit to come through as well as for the readings. But I wanna cleanse our space first. And I want you guys to treat this as if you were right here with me in the room doing this with me, okay? So this is kind of like a little, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I connect, how I connect for my readings, how I connect what I'm doing, candle intentions. Um, so I want you guys to kind of treat it as your own. If you wanna follow along and do the same thing, you can totally follow along. Um, but there is no right or wrong way to do this. This is just the way that I like to do it. Um, and then we'll go from there. So, um, like I said, I started this early, so I want to wait and see who comes in. There will be a replay. So if you have to leave or if you want to catch the replay, you can totally catch the replay. That's fine. Um, but if you're going to be um, going along with me, get something that you can use to cleanse your space with. So you can use sprays. If you can't light anything, you can light. Um, I have sage here that I'm going to light. So you can light some sage. You can light Palo Santo. You can light incense. Whatever you prefer to cleanse your space. But we have to cleanse first, okay? <laughs> so just get your stuff ready. And then um, we'll get started once... I feel like we have enough time, like enough time to allow people to come through. And then um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, we'll cleanse and then we're gonna do a quick little meditation to ground ourselves. And then we'll get started with candle manifestation and then we'll go into straight into free readings. So hopefully you guys, if you brought your decks with you, you can pull cards too. Um, if you feel spirit around, feel free to leave a comment, you know, and, and write it in because everyone who's watching will be able to see the comments as they're going. So if you're sensing something too, um, you can put it in there. If I'm sensing something, I will let you know. Um, and the free readings are basically you can ask whatever you want. Um, and like I said, it doesn't just have to be focused on past loved ones. This could be readings about love, your future your whatever you're currently going through an energy reading like just quick and simple though they're going to be like real quick and simple readings that i'm going to do so all right so like i said if you guys are ready if you guys want to come along with me let's cleanse our space so i'm just going to start i'm going to light the sage you can use spray you could use incense you can use palo santo Smells so good. <laughs> okay. I have a fan on, so it might not stay. But okay, I want to set the intention. So go ahead and, you know, get ready. And I just um, want to cleanse this space here. We're opening up the space for spirit to come through. Love and light. And I just ask that everyone that is involved in this little uh, full moon ceremony here, connects in their own way and I ask that spirit comes through for those that need to hear a message whether it is through the cards or it's through spirit themselves I ask that everyone put that puts in their intentions they actually um, you set intentions that you feel that's something you need and I only invite love and light through in our space and this is our sacred circle Don't forget to cleanse yourself. Now I gotta say like, when I was setting up the table and everything, I was already starting to feel spirit around. The room that I'm using is the living room in the house and my brother is 
his ashes are just to the well, right over there. <laughs> so his energy is definitely present. I have grandma here. I have a ring for grandma. So I don't know if you guys brought anything that represents someone that you love, someone that passed. But um, if you did, you know, that's your way of, of, of inviting them through. Okay, so now that our space is cleansed, it's always important to do that before we do readings. <clears throat> okay. How are you guys feeling? Are you excited? Okay, the other thing I wanted to do is I have um, a seance candle here that I purchased from a lovely who does the candles. Um, and I'm going to light that. There's also a little prayer here. It says, um, spirits come forth, hear my call, step through the veil, and speak. So as I light this candle, I invite spirit to come through, love and light, to receive messages. Bring your messages forward for those of you who want to, are willing to, with arms wide open. So we have the candle lit, you guys. It's a beautiful, beautiful candle. She, was, she told me to put a nice, big, chunky, smoky quartz with it to ground us for that. So we will have you there. All right. <laughs> Hi, love. I'm doing good. I'm really excited for today. I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> it's nice to have, like, the house to myself. If you hear barking in the background, um, we have a house of three dogs, so... There will be barking. Um, hubby is around, so if you hear me asking him to put the dogs out, you'll hear that. <laughs> but other than that, it's just me, hubs, and the dogs. Okay, you guys. So let's start. Let's start with our meditation first. This is just going to be a quickie. I want all of us to be grounded. So now that our space is cleansed, um, go ahead and hi, John. Go ahead and. Um, you can hold a crystal. I don't know if you like to do that. I like to hold a crystal when I meditate, but because I'm gonna be doing the little singing bowl. <laughs> but basically, go ahead and you guys can just get ready, sit down, take in a couple deep breaths. I want you to quiet in your mind, and I want you just to kind of bring everything into center and focus on you. Pay attention to your heartbeat. Pay attention to the blood flow through your veins. Take in a deep breath. Let it out. Take in another deep breath and let it out. And I want you to sit here in silence for a couple seconds. And while you're sitting there in silence, I want you to just really focus on center. Become aware of your body, your blood flow, your heartbeat. Slow everything down. Put your feet firmly on the ground. And I want you to, as you take the next couple deep breaths, as I put the single singing bowl on, I want you to imagine roots growing from the bottoms of your feet down into the ground. We're all grounding ourselves for this, for this night. And at the same time, you can welcome spirit into your space if you feel comfortable doing so. If there's a specific loved one, call them specifically to your space. And pay close attention to how you feel and how your body feels. Those are subtle signs when spirit is around, okay?
pin and I want you guys to imagine a ball of white light right above your head. And with every breath you take, that light is expanding downward like a shower of rain and it's engulfing the entire form of your being. So imagine it as like a cloak of protection over your aura. This ball of light can be gold. It could be the power of green. Whatever color you feel you associate with protection, I want you guys to focus on protecting yourselves right now. I'm already feeling a male spirit behind me. <laughs> Along with your protection, you guys can invite spirit. You can invite your guides, your angels, whomever you choose. I invite nothing but love and light in our circle tonight. And if there is ever something that doesn't feel right, you have every right to ask it to leave. Every root that you just planted in the ground, you are now completely grounded. You're centered, you are protected. And we're ready to open our space. How do you guys feel? Ah, I always feel like a buzz. <laughs> I always feel a buzz after I connect like that. So, um, how are you guys doing in there? <laughs> are you all grounding? Get your crystals with you. If you guys are just joining, we have open space. So I said a nice little prayer for us. I cleansed our space, theoretically speaking. The energy here in my space is good, but I was putting that outward out actually to you guys as well. So um, I invite only love and light in my circle. There is nothing bad, nothing negative. We don't have anything to fear. You feel your non? Oh, that felt so lovely. Reminded me of the light stream I use in therapy. Yeah, always, always, always ground. Always put some form of protection around you. I just saw an image of wings going like this right now. So some of you are calling in your angels. <laughs> I really feel like you have angels. Someone's, or one of you in particular, there's an angel that likes to go like this with their wings over you. Hi loves, hi Emilio. <laughs> okay, so how are you guys? Um, are you guys ready? Let's. I guess we could start with the candle manifestation. Um, that's a little workshop I wanted to do because I had put, I don't know if you guys remember, but I had put, um, on Instagram a while back asking if people would be interested in learning how I do that. So you called in your spirit kitty. Oh yes, the little baby kitties. <laughs> good, very good. Um, at any time that you guys feel something, we can, you know, you can just leave the comments and people, you know, everyone has access to reading the comments. So, you know, if you feel something, especially when we start doing the readings, you are more than likely to chime in I would love to hear your guys' input, okay? So, candle magic. If you guys have your candle with you, if you don't have one, that's okay. I'm gonna keep a replay so you guys can have this for later and you can you know, do your own thing. But as you guys know, tonight is a full moon. I have my window blinds open, so hopefully eventually I'll be able to see the moon, but right now he's, I think he's still further back. <laughs> but the full moon is in Taurus and I had posted a couple days ago that the full moon in Taurus, um, uh, one of my followers actually brought it to my attention because I'm in the middle of house hunting right now. So full moon, full moon in Taurus is really good energy for bringing in investments, making investments. It's really good for a lot of money, finances, homes, grounding, a lot of stuff like that. Taurus energy loves their material stuff. 
Um, they are very, very grounded creatures, okay? <laughs> I'm married to one. Um, so they are all about getting the bills paid on time. They're very organized, but they are also, they love the good stuff in life. So they love the good foods. They love good energy, like really good home life. You feel really good when you're around a Taurus, for the most part, until they get stubborn. <laughs> but this full moon, Full moons are all about manifesting abundance, okay? So new moons are about shedding. We're shedding layers in new moons. We are getting rid of stuff. Full moons, we are actually bringing stuff in. We want to manifest anything that you want more of in life, anything that you want to enhance. Those are the things that you want to focus on for a full moon. So um, if you have a candle and you have a Sharpie, you can actually write on your candle the things that you want to manifest. Now, I also want you guys to have a piece of paper, so a little notepad ready, because this is where you're going to write your intentions. Now, when I say intentions, I mean these are things I would very much stay away from manifesting people, okay? That's where you get a little tricky but I'm talking about energies that you wanna manifest more of in your life. So for me, obviously I'm in the middle of house hunting. I wanna manifest abundance in finding a home um, or abundance in money, making sales with my, with my tarot business or manifesting you know, really good positive people or vibes around me. Um, think, think in terms of that. Um, I would stay away, this is my opinion, but I would stay away from trying to manifest a certain person into your life because then you go kind of against the someone's free will to say, yeah, I do want to be with you or no, I don't want to be with you. You know what I mean? So that is all on your own personal thing. If you want to do that, do it. That You have every right to do what you want to do, but I don't condone that. <laughs> I would say keep it strictly like energies or things that you want to manifest more of um, in terms of like finances, money, energy, emotions, um, things like that, okay? You only have a small tea light candle, that's totally fine. If you guys only have, like let's say you have a candle like this where you can't really write on it or if you have a tea light candle, that's okay. If all you gotta do, even on the bottom of the tea light, just like flip it over, so pretend this is a tea light, on the bottom of the tea light, you can actually write down really tiny or you could put a symbol. So sigils, you could put sigils. You could put like a symbol of what it is that you want. So if it's money, a dollar sign is the pretty basic symbol of money. If it's love, you know, you could put a heart. If it's a certain thing, like for me, it would be a house. I could draw a little house or write house. Whatever it is, you just, you get really creative. So even if it's just a tea light, that's totally fine. The other thing that you could do if, if you only have a tea light or if you only have like a specific candle that you can't really write on, um, you could actually, like I said, put your intentions on the paper and then you could fold it up and enhance it with um, a crystal. So simple like that too. So what I want you guys to do is um, get your piece of paper, if you have paper with you, and I want you to just really focus on Coming up with like, I usually say when you're manifesting, you don't want to do a whole laundry list of stuff. Really focus your intention on maybe no more than three things, I would say. I like to work in threes, so I say three. But if it's just one thing, go for it. If it's three things, go for it. But I would say focus on maybe three things that you really want to enhance this full moon cycle, okay? So um, go ahead and write down on your piece of paper what it is you want to enhance. And then let me read the comments while you guys do that. Do you have to keep it on every day or can you turn it off? And yeah, I like to turn it off. Um, if, I'm leave, if I'm leaving the house, I will put the candle out because I don't trust candles on you know, when I'm not home. But I tend to leave them on overnight. That's usually what my favorite thing is. Sorry, the dog is barking. He's, I think he's barking at Luna or he's seeing spirit. <laughs> Um, you have a dog behind your couch. Yeah, I have a lot. I feel a lot of energy around here. And that's probably why he's barking. My dog is barking right now because of spirit. Luna was actually looking at the, um, at the closet earlier today, like literally looking around. So spirit knew that we were going to be opening space, so they were already coming in. <laughs> 
like a dead one. Oh, a dead dog. <laughs> yeah, probably why Bubba was barking right now. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and write my three intentions on here real fast. So. I think I'm gonna do three things. And you can be as descriptive as you guys want. You can be, you know, however. And then what's the third one I wanted to do? Okay. So I wrote my intentions down. I don't need this whole paper, so I'm going to rip it in half. And then what you're gonna do with the piece of paper that you wrote your intentions on, go ahead and fold it in like a little square because this is what's gonna be sitting underneath your candle, okay? So if you're just working with a tea light, perfect. You know, that's all you gotta do. So just fold it in a square, set it aside. Your ears are ringing, spirit saying hello. Didn't know if I didn't know if I did that one. Your skin looks so glowing. Oh, thank you, love. <laughs> Your ears are ringing too, you guys? Yeah, um, ear ringing, I, I, I take that as a sign of spirit. Sometimes if it's in one ear, um, a lot of times, like if you're sensing spirit, you will hear it either on your right or left side, whatever one you are more strong with. So I tend to feel buzzing in my ear on my right side um, and I'll get chills only on my right side. It's really weird. And then when my spirit guide is talking to me, it's always on this side. <laughs> okay. So now that you wrote your intentions on your piece of paper and you fold it up in a little square, on your candle, if you have a tea light, like I said, focus on the bottom or whatever. Um, if you have a nice pillar candle like this, you could do it on the glass. Um, if you have just a, a regular waxy candle, you can carve with a pencil or like a, like a little X-Acto knife or something, but you can carve whatever you need. You can do symbols, you could do initials, you could completely write it out, but do whatever it is that you wanna do. Now, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but before I would always put like full moon, I would list like what kind of full moon it is. But for this particular candle, I'm just gonna write down my intentions on it. Um, just like quick little keywords for it. So take your Sharpie. And that's what you're gonna do, okay? So I want you to write or do a symbol or whatever you feel like you need to put. You could draw a picture. You could do whatever it is you feel you, is necessary. But you'll write it on your pillar candle. On the glass, you could put it on the bottoms of your tea light. You could put it or carve it into the actual wax. You can even carve it on the top portion here if you wanted to, okay? So go ahead and write your intentions. And like I said, there is no right or wrong way to do this. I have this ugly sticker here. <laughs> so I wanna try to write it away. So like what I used to do is I used to put like full moon and I would draw the little moon just to show like, okay, that's the intention of like, it's a full moon intention. But I'm just, I'm over here, I'm gonna move it over. I kinda did it crooked, so. We're not perfect, <laughs> but let's see, we'll put. My intentions are more descriptive on the paper. On the actual thing, it's just gonna be very basic. And like I said, for manifestation, for a full moon is everything you want to expand or bring more of, okay? Okay, so I actually did mine crooked here. <laughs> but there's the full moon. And there's my little intentions, a house, I wanna manifest more clients for TCM, and love and romance. I always put love and romance. I always like to create abundance for my relationship, my 
my lovely marriage. So there's that. So I'll go ahead and give you guys time to do that. Let's see the comments here. Your house is making crazy cracking noises. Yes. You always feel spirit on your right. Yeah. A lot of people tend to feel, feel spirit on their right side. And it's funny too, because you'll feel your own guides on one specific side, but maybe if you're, if you're a reader and you're reading for other people, you'll start to feel spirit on the other side of you. So those of you guys who are joining, um, we are doing our candle, candle manifestations. So I was telling everybody to, on a piece of paper, write down your intentions. For the full moon, we are manifesting things that we want to bring more of. So we are looking about expanding. Um, so everything that you are setting intentions for, it's things that you want to have more of, things that you want to um, have abundance in. So think in terms of that. Is it possible to feel jittery when the spirit is around? Oh yeah, to feel jittery, to feel like buzzing, definitely. And also, if you feel jittery, you could be also tapping into a specific trait, um, a personality trait or a like an illness of a spirit too. It could be that. You put self-love, excited energy, excited energy and contentment. I love it. Self-love is such a big one. Especially for Taurus energy, because Taurus energy is all about love. It's ruled by Venus. So it's like so sensual. So that's a good, it's, a, it's actually a good time to, to do, to focus on the self-love, the sensual stuff, your relationship, that kind of thing. But also abundance and money and finances. You never feel anything until you set up your candles. Candles are really powerful, you guys. That's why I like to do the manifestation candles. I put crystals in my hand and I feel a line of energy coming from my left hand all the way to the center of my forehead, I guess, where my third eye is. Yeah, definitely. You're very sensitive to the crystals if you're feeling all that. Goosebumps on your right side, perfect. Your cat knows what's up. My cat knows what's up. <laughs> she came running over, chirping as soon as we opened up spirit and has been sitting next to me on. Cats are so sensitive to spirit, you guys. They are like, literally, they see it totally. <laughs> Happiness in your home, that's a gorgeous one. And uh, yeah, candle magic is amazing. Okay, so how do you guys feel right now? Are you guys, are you guys good? Did you guys do all of your little intentions? Write them up on that piece of paper and fold them up in a little cube, a nice little square. <laughs> now, also with the candle, those of you guys who are tuning in, that the reason why I said to have a Sharpie is so that you could write down your intentions on the candle. So those of you who just came in, if you wanna do that, you can do that. And now the rest of you guys, those of you who have already done your candle intentions, um, I want you guys to put your candle in your hand, okay? So hopefully you didn't light it yet. If you did light it, it's okay, blow it out. We'll start over. <laughs> But if you didn't light it, that's good. Um, so I want you to put your candles in your hand. So your tea lights, the, your candle candle. And when you're holding it, because a lot of your energy comes through your hands, right? When you're holding your candle, I want you to really focus. I want you to sit down, hold the candle in your hand, and I really want you to kind of like focus on the, th the three, three or two or however many things you listed on your candle. And I really want you to put the intention into it of feeling those energies. How badly do you want more of this? How badly do you want this? You know what I mean? So you're, you're putting your intention into it and, you're, and just feel the, the, the energy going through your hands into the candle. That's basically how you set an intention with your physical energy, okay? So go ahead and sit in that moment. You can close your eyes, but I want you to just imagine all of those things that you want more of. You're just planting that energy, that intention into your candle, okay? So go ahead and work on that right now. Those of you guys who feel like you need to say a prayer, you could say a prayer to the candle, that's fine.
is no right or wrong way to do this. So just keep that in mind. And if you guys know Reiki, you can also infuse your Reiki symbols into your candle too. So. If you guys work with herbs, if you work with crystals, if you have little crystal chips, if you have herbs, I wish I had my herbs, I don't have them though. You could drop them into the top. If you have oils that you love, you can put oils onto the top of your candle. Whatever you feel like doing. If you're doing, if you're doing love manifestation or like enhancing love, so like for me, one of mine is love and romance for my marriage. You can put like um, a rose quartz in your candle or you could put like rose oil into your candle I, or roses. <laughs> I wish I had my herbs, but I don't have them. They're, they're gone, they're boxed up. They've been boxed up since I moved. Um, but you can do that or if you don't, that's okay too. Um, but if you have anything specific you wanna like drop in your candle, you can totally do that. So dress your candles up if you like. And once you feel like you're ready, um, what I like to do is put the piece of paper that has your written intentions. You can either make a crystal grid and you could put a crystal on top of it to infuse it, you know, to enhance it. Or what I also do is I will place it underneath, this ugly little paper. <laughs> I will place it underneath my candle. And then when I light the candle, you pretty much are saying I send out all of the energies that I have infused into my candle, I send it out into the universe and I welcome it back. So basically that's what you're doing. Everything that you sent out, all of the energy that you put forth into the universe, you better be ready to welcome it back to you, which is why I say, be very careful if you are manifesting a specific person because you may get what you're asking for, but you may not want exactly what you're asking for. So be very careful <laughs> when you do that. But basically everything that you are manifesting you, it's it's like a, it's, it comes back to you. So anything you put out into the world, it will come back to you. So you can set the paper, like I said, underneath your candle and you, silently, you could say it out loud, but you basically say, as I light my candle, I am infusing my energies out into the universe and I welcome it back to me, okay? And there you go. So that is like your candle intention. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I feel ready. And then I light my candle. I'm gonna wait for him to go burn all the way down the wick. Hopefully he doesn't burn out because I have the fans on. <laughs> and then that's it. So then I will let him sit since tonight is literally the full moon. I will let him sit overnight, all night, because I'm home. So all night he'll be in there. If you want to leave your candle on when you're not home, put this in the bathtub, okay? That's a nice little Hispanic thing. All the grandmas would do it. Put your candle in the bathtub so that if it does happen to fall over, if there's an earthquake and your candle falls over, it's in the bathtub. It's not going to light up, okay? That's why I like these seven-day candles because when it falls over, it doesn't go anywhere. The, the glass catches it. It's The wick is so deep into the glass already that it does it, it kind of puts itself out does that make sense so i trust these way more than i do like a um like a, a waxy candle that's by itself that's not enclosed in um in glass so put it you could put it in the bathtub you could put it in your sink um anywhere that it's enclosed in like not it's not freaking wood okay <laughs> but um or if you feel comfortable, you can put your candle out. Now, some people are totally against blowing out your candles when you're doing specific candle work. 
Um, I'm not against it. To me, it's like I set the intention so you can set the intention all over again when you light the candle. Um, some people are picky. They don't like to blow it out. They will snuff it out or whatever it's called. I don't do that. I blow it out. I haven't had a problem. Um, but basically, this little baby is going to stay lit all night. So I'm going to put him on the windowsill so that he can be present. Yay! And like I said, you could put crystals around the base of the candle. You could put crystals over the paper and as a grid. Whatever you guys want to do, it's your own way. Do it your way. That's just the way I like to do it. Um, but I wanted to share that with you guys because I know some of you see that I put candle intention pictures sometimes. <laughs> and you'll ask me, oh, what is that? That's how I do it. So make it your own. Do it your own way. There is no right or wrong way to do something. Every person is different change it up, do your own element, but that's basically how you set an intention candle. Um, and then pay attention to how it burns. Um, I have a video on my YouTube channel where I talk about candle magic and like the, the ways to read the flames and the glass and all of that. Um, so check out that video. It's, it's, uh, it's on my YouTube channel. Check out like the playlist for R Rambling Rose, I think it's on. Um, and take notes because it's a long ass video. <laughs> But you can read your candle. If your candle, when you blow it out, if the candle is really dirty, it just says your intention eh, probably didn't work, so you may have to do another one. Um, if your candle blows out or it goes out real fast, like it burns through really fast, that, that motherfucker is ready to go. So <laughs> it just depends. If it is a slow burning candle, your intention is going to take a while to manifest, okay? So pay attention to all those little things. Um, Okay, so let me read the comments and then we're gonna start on the readings. Do you have to keep it burning long to set the intention? No, it doesn't have to be burning long. That's why some people like to do tea light candles because they only burn for maybe like an hour or two. It doesn't have to, however long you feel is necessary. Love the tip also, I'll be popping in and out because I'm in class. Oh, for sure, girl. <laughs> I love putting crystals around the candle. Yeah, me too. I I like to put clear quartz because clear quartz, blah, blah, blah. clear quartz enhances everything. So clear quartz is like my favorite to enhance stuff. Um, how long do you usually see the manifestation until you usually see the manifestation? So it depends. Like I said, if your candle is burning fast, you will tend to see that happen right away. I always say you can't just rely on the candle to give you what you want. You also have to put focus and physical energy into it too. So if you are like for me, I put the intention for a house. Okay. I'm not just going to think, Oh, I lit the candle. So I'm going to be getting my house soon. No, I also have to do the, the house hunting and do all of that. But I'm setting the intention that the process will be smooth and perfect as it's meant to be. Um, I did a candle manifestation class. Um, I took with a, with a witch like man, maybe four years ago. And she was the one that actually taught me how to do all this. And I put the manifestation out there that I wanted to um, manifest a business, like a, the tarot thing, because that was like, it was barely like a baby when I was doing that. And everything just like fell into place. It was like maybe a few months later, that was when I decided to go part-time from a full-time job. And I was doing TCM half and half, and then part-time working at the library. So. <laughs> You will start to see things change. Depends on what you are manifesting though. If you're manifesting a person, that's a little bit more tricky because then you're, you're like I said, you're dealing with um, someone's free will, okay? You love to put crystals and candles. Is it a great, this, oh, it's a great video. I refer to all the time. Yeah, thank you, love. It has so many views. I was surprised. I was like, dang. <laughs> is it okay to put to do two candles, one for personal life? Oh, for sure. Do as many as you want, to be honest. You don't have to mix them. I mix them because I'm cheap. I don't only really have one candle. <laughs> um, my flame goes from strong and steady to flickering so much. Yeah, strong and steady flame is strong. It's, it's, that's, that's good intention. When it flickers a lot, it's, I feel like to me, and that's, and that's how you go intuitively too. So to me, a flickering candle is one sign that spirit is around. So um, I have the window open, so there's a draft, so it's kind of false advertising. But <clears throat> when the flame, well, you can't see it, but when the flame flickers or it's um, it crackles, that's a sign that spirit is around. 
I actually had that happen shortly after my brother passed away. The candle I lit for him for Dia de los Muertos like was freaking crackling. I still have the video. Um, but it depends. A dancing flame could be different energy for different things. <clears throat> so go at it with an intuitive perspective. What does it feel like for you? And then you can also pull cards for your candle too to kind of see like what you're working with. Let's see, my video froze, where do you put the paper? Put the paper underneath your candle. So I have my candle here. Stick your paper underneath it and let it sit on, you know, I put, I put mine on the windowsill, I have the blinds up because the, the moon will eventually, the light will come through the window, but you could put it wherever you want. But put your paper underneath your candle. It's like symbol, a symbol of setting your intention. You added peridot and citrine. Nice. Citrine is so good for abundance and money. You fold it, um, fold it up under the candle. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, thank you, my love. I added selenite dust in pieces. My candle is slow and steadily burning. Perfect. That's a, to me, I like a slow and steady candle. If your candle pops and breaks, only happen once. Woo. I don't, I don't think I've ever had a candle break. That's crazy. That might have been a real powerful intention you set for that, for that to happen. That could, you know, if you read it intuitively, that could mean maybe the intention you set is not meant to happen at this time. So spirit said, never mind, it can't happen yet. You could look at it that way. But that's crazy. Okay. So well, you guys can still continue on your candle manifesting, but I want to get to the readings because... Um, I know Instagram only lets you have this for like an hour. So we'll do readings until the video ends. But um, I don't want to be on here too long because hubby, he's going to be hungry. And I haven't had dinner, so we're going to have a late dinner. But let's do some readings. So um, the way I want to do this is I'm, I'll be reading the comments. I apologize if I don't get to everybody. There's 42 people in here, so I may not get to everybody. These are going to be quickie readings as much as I can do. Um, but I want you to be specific with your question. Um, the more specific you are, the more detailed your reading answer will be. Um, if it's just like, oh, I just want to know what spirit has to say, I'll give that to you. But I say this to my clients, be specific if you want a specific answer. Okay, so go ahead and... To start listing your questions and I will do my best to get to who I see but like I said I apologize um, and you may have to keep putting your question out there until I see it <laughs> but let's feel I want to feel what's around My candle lit up and it was completely puffed with the white smoke. I have to. <laughs> I like it when it puffs with the smoke. If it's black, though, it that says, oof, there's a lot of negative stuff that's work, that it's working its way through. I'm traveling in a van. I used a rock. I used a rock and had collected, I had collected to write my intentions rather than a candle. I'll leave it outside on. Oh, I love that. That is so cool. Whatever works, you guys. Okay, I love a quickie. What is in store for me? Okay, so Chelsea, what's in store for you? King of Pentacles, Ten of Swords, Knight of Wands. So what's in store for you? Um, is this two people? Chelsea, are you in a relationship right now or are you single? Just answer that for me, please. Because this is two in different, in different energies trying to get your attention. And the Ten of Swords is making me feel like um, not being able to make a decision between two people or it could be feeling stuck between two people or feeling like you're kind of being pulled both ways. So Chelsea... Are you in a relationship? Yes, you're married. Okay. 
So hubby is coming up as king of pentacles. That was the first one that I pulled, okay? We have a knight of wands and we have a ten of swords. Now I'm going to go ahead and say that I feel like with hubby, there might have been a little bit of a disconnect recently between the two of you. Ten of swords is kind of showing me, it makes me feel like there's a regret. Something someone said, um, maybe you guys have been at each other's throats a lot lately. Knight of wands energy is someone who's very impulsive, okay? So that could be something coming up in the near future is I would say there's going to be some issues that you're going to need to address. I get the feeling like I just heard spirit say, stop running away from the truth. Stop running away from like, stop avoiding. That's how I'm hearing. That's what I'm feeling. Stop avoiding something. If there's something that needs to be said, whether it's to this, to your hubby, or maybe they have something to say to you, but that Ten of Swords energy is, um, it's the ending of a cycle. It's coming soon. So I would say within the next month or so, um, I don't want to say there's going to be a huge fight, but I feel like there's going to be a lot of, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to come out. Okay. This is pent up motions, pent up feelings, things like that. Okay. Love, let me pull an Oracle card for you. It's nothing to worry about, but I feel like spirit is saying you stop avoiding it. You have chills. Thank you. Okay, good. So I'm <laughs> I always get worried like I don't want to be completely wrong, but I feel like something something's gonna come up and let's see Infected Memento Mori. Oh, I love it. And then we have the Dharma card, which is all of the chakras So what I feel like with this in this case infected this could be either somebody or something has been causing a toxicity in your in your marriage, okay? Um, and then the momentum mori is kind of saying, remember why you guys were together. Okay. Remember the good times when, when things are rocky, remember why you guys said I do. And then all of the chakra cards coming up is like saying, be, be, you gotta be completely connected. You and hubby have to be on the same page. Cause I feel like right now you're not on the same page. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see here. Who am I going to pick? I'm not even going to look for the next comment. I'm just going to pick. Let's do Emilio. I, uh, can I get a love reading? I want to inquire about a person you're interested in. Okay, let's see. Someone you are interested in. For Emilio. Emilio, do you have a grandma? <laughs> Grandma, I feel, I just feel like real, like grandma energy, but I feel hot right now. Um, I don't know if like <laughs> someone's running hot or I don't know if like when you connect with spirit, if you run hot, but I feel hot. Like I got really hot right now. And then I saw grandma, like grandma energy. <laughs> okay. So Emilio, for this person that we're talking about, we have five of cups, the emperor and nine of wands. So this person is definitely going to be, um, very, uh, what's the word I'm going to say? They're a very strong personality. They're very strong willed. Okay. I feel like there might be a sense of you feeling a little inferior to that person. Um, I also feel like the five of cups is saying, don't tap into the past. So don't bring old baggage from past relationships into this present one. If you connect, yes, you have a grandma in spirit. Okay. So I saw grandma in spirit. I felt her. <laughs> she came up from the back. Um, but I also felt, I feel hot. So I don't know if you run hot, if grandma ran hot, she, maybe she always had like, she was always dabbing herself. <laughs> Look at, I'm getting red. Can you see that? So I don't know, something with the chest, but grandma is making me hot. <laughs> um, the five of cups is like, the five of cups is making me feel like don't tap into the past, don't tap into baggage and stuff when it comes to trying things with this person okay they are nine of wands energy so they're coming from a broken relationship or there is something previous so a lot of the energy that i'm feeling for you with this person there is potential for tapping into past issues okay and you don't want to go into there don't go into that territory you and this person in question um i don't know if that's a common theme with you when you meet people but if you are if you tend to talk about past relationships this is a no-no for this person because this person is pretty either fresh out of a relationship or they're still sorting out things from the past okay 
I pulled um, the root chakra. So when it comes to this love interest, it's going to be important that you go into it grounded, okay? You need to be 100% ready to dedicate and devote time and energy to this person, um, especially if they are fresh out of a relationship because they're going to have some pretty crazy expectations and we don't want that Five of Cups energy, energy to turn into like regret, okay? Let's see if I... Okay. Who am I going to go with? Let's go with... Let's just go with just Rosanna. What does my spirit guides or ancestors have to say to you? Let's see. Spirit guides and ancestors. So let's pull from my oracle. I'm... Whoa! There we go. Bam. Okay. Expand opposition, feel, listen, love. Ugh. Expand in opposition. So when it comes to when it comes to connecting with your guides, they're telling you that you feel them and you hear them. Okay. We got the hand and the ear coming up. Okay. And they threw these cards out. So <laughs> they're saying you hear us and you feel us. So um, the way you connect is that way. So if you hear things, if you feel like you hear things, if you feel a buzzing in your ear, if you feel cold when it's not cold, or you feel like I said buzzing, or you feel hot like I was feeling hot and I was like breaking out earlier um those are you ways that you tap into spirit okay so they're saying we connect to you by feeling us and hearing us they come from love energy so if you connect with your energy points your shock your heart chakra is where you're going to feel it most I would give you um I would say expand it I'm seeing like this going out okay so expand your heart chakra more if there's any chakra that you should be working with it's your heart um, good crystals for that I would say are rose quartz or any green crystal because um, the heart chakra is associated with green we got opposition and then expand was also what came out so I feel like being like when you're in opposition you're you, you will kind of you'll feel things but then you doubt it you doubt it so it's almost like you you know you're sensing something, but then you have doubt in yourself. Like, I don't think that's real. Don't do that. Because when you do that, you're not allowing yourself to expand, okay? You're kind of prohibiting yourself from growing. And they're definitely around you. I feel like for your ancestors, I feel like there's a lot of feminine ancestor energy. Well, I'm like running hot. <laughs> Spirit is making me hot today. Um, I feel like there's a lot of female ancestor energy around you, and I'm getting a sense of an ant, okay? So there's like an ant energy, um, but a lot of females in your ancestry line. A lot of like strong feminine energy. I don't know if you really resonate a lot with like feminine, um, like the, you know, women power, women power and, and and all of that, or maybe that's a struggle you have, but the, the spirit is making me feel like woman energy is strong in your ancestry line. Um, so maybe that's something you're dealing with right now, finding your voice. So crazy, your grandma changed the room temperature. <laughs> she did. You'll always like that, thank you. You're welcome, Emilio, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Okay, let's do a Acadian bear. I just saw yours. Um, let me see if Rosa. Yeah, sometimes you feel like you zone out and you do hear them. Yeah, trust when you hear them, my love, because it's there. It's them. And write it down. Like if you if you're having trouble figuring it out, like write it down. That's that's why you see a lot of like mediums writing notes and stuff. Write down what you're what you're sensing. You'll be surprised what comes through. Okay, so let's do. Well, who was I saying? Um, Acadian Bear. Rose, can I get some guidance on what I need to do to connect with your intuition more? Basically, how do I get over my fear of my intuition? So it's not your fear of intuition, love. What I'm sensing, it's your fear of being right. <laughs> I feel like it's like your intuition is obviously is like your own true lie detector. Um, and sometimes we don't want to trust that because we're not ready to hear the truth. Um, so we tend to not trust our intuition, like our vibe, because we usually know we're right all the time, right? Um, so I think it's that, but let's see. Tips for you to connect with your intuition. 
I'm okay before I even read that I just got an image of driving so I don't know if you do a lot of driving or commuting but I feel like when it comes to you trusting your intuition you have a lot of weird like weird synchronicities in the car it could be um, like it's like like seeing road signs or license plate numbers things like that or maybe you get a lot of hunches like you're driving and you feel like I should turn here or I shouldn't get on the freeway right now I don't know if that's something that happened to you but that's what just came to my head right now <laughs> Let's see. Let me see if you wrote anything. <laughs> Tell me if that feels accurate for you, my love. So the card that came up, we have goddess. We have hostility. Do you have a rough past with faith, with religion? Did you have a rough childhood or growing up with religion, my love? Arcadian bear. Like something like being dictated what to do and what to believe. And you got knights, a page, and a queen. So this could be a family dynamic when you were young. You've had experiencing spirit in the side of the road. Okay, then that's why I saw the car. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was kind of forced on you. Okay, um, I have the knight, the page, and the queen of pentacles. So that's like mom, dad, and brother, sister, or whoever. Or it could be you. Um, at a very young age, they forced it on you. And I feel like by that, you have like that sense of um, like you're forced to believe in something. So when it comes down to you trusting in your own intuition or trusting in the mystical or trusting in your cards, you, I feel like you, you do a lot of this. You do a lot of teetering, okay? And I feel like why it's so hard for you to trust your intuition is because as a child or as a young person, you were in that, that whole mindset was instilled in you that you should be believing it this way. This is, this is you should be going to church more or whatever. I'm also feeling a lot of pain right now in my lower back. <laughs> So, Acadian Bear, I don't know if this is you or this is someone else, but I'm getting a lot of pressure in my lower back. Is anyone in this chat going through some back pain, like lower back pain? Like, I literally feel like someone's pushing their fist in my lower back. Jenny, you are? Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling too. I'm getting, I'm really feeling that right now, like pain in my lower back. You know what it feels like? And someone's gonna start their period or someone did start their period today. Because the feeling I'm getting is it's that lower back pain when you start your period. Yeah, did you start your period, Jenny? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's what I'm feeling. Someone started the period or a lot of you did. Because <laughs> I'm definitely feeling that. <laughs> you had experience seeing, okay, no, I was reading. Okay, let's do, um, Adrian, Adrian, let's read for you, my love. I haven't read for you in a while. Um, you care a lot about someone, but a lot of this shit happened and we feel, and you fell out, but you still feel that he has a place in your heart, but you don't know if it's your intuition or wishful thinking. Okay, so you had a falling out with this person. Let's see what's going on. Let's read on his energy. Let's just see kind of like where he's at. What's the, the energy between you two right now? Let's see what's going on. I've just heard pull from the middle, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, the falling out, did it have to do with someone else? Was it another girl? Because Queen of Wands is coming up. And then we have the star card. This could have been an ex. And he's coming up as a Knight of Swords. He's all in his head. Knight of Swords energy can be tough with the words, too. He can be really mean verbally, I'm feeling. So this is for Adrian. Yeah? Okay. So um, if this has to do with another girl, the falling out, definitely the Queen of Wands, it's giving me the vibe of being an ex. Okay? An ex person or someone he once dated. He's kind of caught between two people. He's not committing. He's not ready for the commitment. That's the vibe I'm feeling. But the star card, that's what made me feel like this was a, a, either a past love or this was somebody he was still interested in. Like he's like one foot in, one foot out. Um, 
and the, the fact that he's coming up as a knight of swords i want to say and let me pull some oracle on that but my vibe is telling me that he comes off as really nice but i don't know if you've really gotten to know him on a personal level but i'm getting the vibe that he can be very mean 